Dear colleagues, thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying with us. At the beginning of my presentation, I would like to emphasize the role played by the European Society of Oncogirl Oncology uh, in the organization of this meeting. This uh, is an organization that we uh, collaborate with and that has supported us for the past 10 years in all our undertakings. Yes, uh, uh, GEO has made um, many scientific advances available to us. It helps us uh, get more recourse to European experience. It fosters exchange of opinion, and it shows uh, our collaboration shows that the in terms of quality of care, uh, Russian physicians do display a high level of proficiency. Owing to ESGO and our collaboration, you now have access to European guidelines on uh, ESGO website. Uh, they have been translated by uh, RSGO into Russian. There is a very convenient software available that will facilitate the work of uh, oncogynecologists. Uh, you can feed the data for your patient in this program, and um, this software uh, will, uh, this app will uh, give you a lot of interesting information, full information about management strategies available. Uh, ESCO and I, uh, uh, ESCO publications and IJGS make state-of-the-art technologies available to us and relevant problems, uh, and they help uh, us to um, discuss relevant problems. Today, we had a fantastic presentation by Amand, uh, a world-class uh, expert in oncofertility. Uh, he uh, modestly uh, failed to mention that he is uh, publishing a book about standards of treatment. Uh, of pregnant women with cancers, uh, with cancer, uh, summarizing the global experience of uh, managing this difficult group of patients through the support of uh, ESGO. ESGO also uh, provides webcasts on the on its website that saves you a lot of travel costs and a lot of time, uh, which is difficult to find in our busy schedules. The website introduce, uh, has all of the keynote speeches and lectures from different conferences. And it's a very interesting internet community. It's a very interesting young, growing community. The next international conference of ESGO will take part, uh, part in Athens, Greece, this year. Uh, and then next, I would like to concentrate on the subject of my paper, uh, this concluding paper because uh, we wanted to cover all the fields relating to cervical cancer treatment and uh, to focus on uh, uh, chemotherapy, on the key trends, innovations available in this field. Oh, no, this is topical for this uh, particular type of cancer because there is practically no screening and there is a lot of cervical cancer and uh, uh, the chemotherapy is very uh, important. Now, if we look at the numbers in the structure of uh, incidents, there are uh, 505 for St. Petersburg for third, third and fourth, 222 cases. And so uh, about several dozen cases with NAD uh, N1 
So that's 180. If we remove some of the individual patients who were lucky and uh, they are with the exaggeration, then that's still about 170, 160 patients uh, who are the candidates just for the drug treatment of uh, cervical cancer. And radiologists uh, also refuted them. So these are the numbers just for St. Petersburg, about 150, 160 patients. The only way out for them, that's the uh, drug therapy. And we understand what works here and what does not work, how we can help these patients. Then, of course, we uh, the, there are uh, recurrences, and uh, this, uh, the, 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 so we must understand that, of course, uh, again, these uh, uh, chemical substances. Uh, um, up to the uh, century, it was believed that uh, uh, this uh, uh, particular tumor was uh, chemo-resistant. Uh, but nowadays, we know a lot about uh, um, uh, new uh, adjuvant uh, therapy, so it works. And then um, uh, 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 palliative um, uh, treatment uh, spread. Uh, the cisplatin was used in the past uh, mostly, and uh, the survival rate, uh, thanks to this uh, scheme, was uh, about half a year. Um, but when we add the second component, uh, cisplatin uh, plus uh, patecan, then uh, the, the survival rate increases. So we come to the conclusion that um, uh, we need to use the doublets in this case. So we now look for uh, the doublets uh, for the ones that work better and what kind of a combination works better. It was believed that the platinum chemotherapy was a must, and then the second component was uh, intended to improve those nine months. And uh, what was that uh, second component to be added? They uh, we looked at cisplatin, um, and uh, um, Paclitaxel as uh, here in this slide. And indeed, the numbers for doublets were higher. But within uh, the doublets, uh, the numbers uh, seem to be uh, the same. So what is the conclusion? What is the outcome? How can we uh, change the situation for the better? Different options associated with the second component are concerned. And there is a WHO with cisplatin plus the second component added. Now it was uh, patletexin, venerolabin, uh, gemcetabin, uh, topotecan. And so these modes are being compared. And um, as for the uh, non-recurrency survival, still the numbers are the same. And still there is a standard. The comparison from which we start uh, the uh, effectiveness of this or that particular regimen, platinum component and um, patletex cell. So it's a standard chemotherapy was uh, in the focus of attention. So it is, was it, within the doublet, the cyplistin was always there. And, uh, so, so, uh, and then the, there is a Japanese uh, study. So within the standard, uh, uh, there was always with gamma therapists and radiotherapists, uh, there was just cisplatin uh, for cervical cancer. But it appears that um, not just that, uh, we can also use uh, carboplatin. And the Japanese uh, colleagues of ours demonstrated the same kind of response as, as that uh, with cisplatin. So um, uh, the platinum uh, can be uh, also in, in a component of other um, uh, preparation. So the uh, results are comparable. And then uh, up to the year 2005, there was still that particular level. It had been proven that uh, there is a uh, uh, trend towards the increase of uh, um, recurrency-free survival. Well, the toxicity might have increased, but then there was stagnation. How could we improve uh, the survival rate and uh, um, uh, recurrency-free? So the target uh, uh, preparations appear. Angiogenesis plays a very significant role in the progressing of the tumors. And uh, so then um, that was the time when um, bevacizumab began to be studied, the hu uh, humanized monoclonal and body which has um, endogenic properties. And so what uh, can we see following the results of the studies? This is GOG 240, within which uh, they compared the doublets, poplitic cell plus disciplatin, poplitic cell toplican, and uh, uh, plus minus uh, biotizumab. So if comparison was carried out uh, the of these doublets by themselves, then uh, following the results and considering 
having the um, uh, uh, recurrence free uh, survival. The figures were noble. The response was different. And the Lake of Apinia, um, there was uh, there were certain uh, indicators, and there was uh, nausea associated with some of the doublets. And then within this study, uh, we set out uh, the patients with the target uh, um, therapy and without that. And so we uh, compared those two groups, and uh, with that, we were able to receive a well-proven um, uh, result uh, with the overall survival rate and uh, recovery Current three. Uh, so you can see there is uh, um, uh, for overall 16 against 18. So there was um, um, a, a better result if the target uh, drugs are added. And of course, we have to think about the toxicity, um, about the profile, uh, profile of the accessibility of this or that particular mode. And uh, we, the focus, um, the, the main um, considerations were associated with the fistulas within the group uh, where. Uh, um, uh, the uh, the uh, bevacizumab was um, um, prescribed. Well, the patients who had bevacizumab had a larger number of fistulas, and there was there was a complication definitely. But with all of that. Uh, all these complications were not uh, uh, critical, and uh, they, they were they did not lead to a terminal outcome for the patients, and uh, did not uh, worsen catastrophically their life quality. So this uh, resulted in the recommendation: the um, uh, uh, target um, uh, uh, drug with the. Um, uh, cervical cancer is a recommendation. So this is the result of the uh, GOG uh, uh, 240 um, um, review. So the, the, the profile of the safety of uh, bevacizumab complies with the, is acceptable, and uh, um, it is possible to prescribe uh, this uh, uh, drug as a part of a systemic um, uh, chemotherapy for the uh, spread um, cervical cancer. So there is a better result with overall survival rate. And then starting with 2014, there was approval of be bevacizumab uh, within all the um, international recommendations in Great Britain uh, with uh, FDA, um, the United States, and uh, no, in the European Union. There is also approval of the standard of treatment of the spread um, um, and recurrent uh, cervical cancer. So, uh, doublets and bevacizumab added as a target drug. And this also is reflected in the recommendations of the European Society. All this is stipulated there. Bevacizumab can be added to the standard, and the chemotherapy is recommended for the patients with satisfactory somatic. Uh, um, um, a status and it is recommended as a standard for treatment and uh, uh, this is also reflected in the Ruska recommendations and uh, uh, our colleagues in the Russian Federation rely on that and so this is a treatment standard so what next uh, that was 2013 and once again it's a plateau so the uh, overall survival rate was six, 16 17 months and so what next what do we do with these patients next and uh, uh, there is an active move uh, towards the uh, immune therapy studies, uh, um, helping in the systemic treatment of uh, cervical cancer. We know quite well how effective is uh, the immune therapy from the point of view of prevention and vaccination of uh, um, cervical cancer. All this works very well. There are preventive vaccines, and but this is a very different story because that is for healthy uh, teenage girls and. Uh, Indeed, there is anti-bodies uh, uh, developed in the body, and this uh, uh, prevents uh, the cervical cancer. Vaccination in many of the European countries is within the calendar. It is free in Australia and the United States. Uh, they are getting rid of cervical cancer through that. Uh, it's part of the preventive measures, these vaccines. Are. So there is an immune response uh, uh, that is developed before the sexual life has started, before 
the girls come across the HPV. The girls are already protected. They do have antibodies at this early stage, and the immune system works, and the cervical cancer would not develop. And so these preventive vaccines are approved in over 130 countries of the world. In the Russian Federation, unfortunately, the vaccine is not within the calendar of vaccination, although its effectiveness has been proven by the international uh, trials of uh, different stages and uh, the results of clinical trials uh, have been able to support that after work with large populations and there are bivalent, uh, uh, nine valent and uh, uh, quadrivalent vaccines. Uh, the nine valent vaccine is not registered in the Russian Federation. We just have the bivalent and the quadrivalent um, uh, vaccines, but not then not neither of them is within the calendar. So if uh, someone, if mothers want to have their daughters vaccinated, they have to pay for that. Now the coverage with uh, vaccination in Europe is quite high, and uh, the goal is to <coughs> reduce in practice uh, the uh, incidence. And there are very good results. Here is uh, Australia. The coverage with uh, preventive vaccination uh, at school um, is 88 percent uh, plus, and uh, as a result. Uh, um, uh, there is um, um, uh, lower incidence of uh, the first uh, m markers. Uh, there is um, uh, candelomas uh, development are at a lower level, and they can see that the dysplasia of uh, uh, uterus neck is also um, at a very much lower level, almost uh, by 90 percent. We have been able to prove very high uh, uh, efficacy of the preventive vaccine, the purpose of which is to prevent uh, the infection um, um, uh, with um, of, uh, HPV, uh, so that the oncogenic types uh, do not uh, um, uh, work as uh, ontogenic loci, um, do not let them build into the uh, cells of the uh, squamous epithelium to prevent the development of cancer. Immune therapy um, um, for therapeutic uh, purposes is uh, tuned on something different, so it's um, um, associated with the fact of the uh, persistence. Uh, uh, the the uh, tumor genesis is uh, there in place. Uh, the tumor is there. So all those uh, oncogenic loci have worked and uh, the, the virus, uh, HPV virus, um, has acted and uh, the uh, vaccination um, uh, uh, uses as a target um, those loci uh, which um, uh, work in a negative way um, if the uh, virus uh, um, is effective. So the um, therapy is focused on breaking that uh, um, very negative link. Um, uh, the cell uh, should not recognize itself as uh, um, um, an alien cell and uh, to avoid apoptosis. So immune therapy uh, inhibits uh, these checkpoints uh, checkpoints, uh, um, uh, PDL adin, so uh, uh, PDL one, so that is the uh, program deficit receptors, and so this is what uh, uh, we can find on T lymphocyte and PL. It is the ligand which is responsible within the cancer cell um, 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 for that uh, for those loci that uh, uh, involve the uh, T lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes uh, um, um, with, together with the cell. Uh, do not let uh, the cell recognize uh, the tumor cell. <laughs> Immune therapy breaks this vicious cycle and helps to improve. It's the recurrence free and or disease free and overall survival. So there are two types of immune medications available uh, affecting those affecting uh, those impacting the PD1 receptor and there are blockers of PDL1 proteins that are located on the tumor. So this is the key difference between them. Uh, the first group includes nivolumab, pebrolizumab, uh, sabeplumab, 
uh, BDL1 blockers are Dervalumab, Avalumab, and Adrazolizumab. These medications are widely cited. They are frequently referred to at many international conferences. Stage two uh, keynote, uh, phase two uh, keynote um, study has been published, uh, which involved 98 cases of uh, cervical cancer recurrence from 42 centers in 17 countries. All of the patients were PDL1 positive. 77 of these had received um, over one line of medication. Pemprolizumab um, was used, was administered to these patients, after which response to immune therapy was evaluated. Now, keynote one uh, five twelve uh, shows twelve percent improvement in uh, overall survival, and uh, FDA approved pembrolizumab as immune therapy in case of uh, recurrent and uh, advanced cancer. These are some other pembrolizumab, yes, um, in uh, uh, approved by FDA uh, in uh, 2018. Nevolumab is uh, under study. Dovolumab uh, uh, is also studied in combination with radiotherapy. The slide summarizes some of the most recent data on immune therapy. That is ongoing until now. Um, the patients have shown uh, responses f uh, ranging from uh, 14 to 20 percent. So there can be some hopes, at least, um, of uh, overall survival improvement through systemic uh, therapy, combination of systemic therapy, targeted therapy, and immune therapy. At the end of this discussion, I would like to thank you for your attention and to invite you to attend uh, a breakout session on Sunday, focusing on uh, trophoblastic uh, disease. This session will be held together with the European Society for trophoblastic tumors and will feature some of the best um, experts ever, including Leon Schumer, Michael Zucker, that have presented at many international conferences. Uh, they will present uh, their data, their findings on Sunday, uh, which I would encourage you to visit. Thank you.